Good afternoon. So I'm uh, Ludovic Champenois, and I will be talking about web APIs. Uh, I was not supposed to do this talk, so uh, the guy who was supposed to do it uh, could not make it. So I build basically the slides over the weekend, so bear with me. Uh, and he, the title was in 30 minutes, so we'll try to see how, how far we can go in 30 minutes plus slides. So uh, I'm a Google engineer, so I work in the Google App Engine team in, uh, in uh, California. And I'm in charge of uh, two things, uh, the SDKs, uh, Python and, uh, and Java, as well as the runtimes, Python and Java. Uh, it's not the entire App Engine, it's a small team, but uh, it's a critical uh, technology that you are using if you are using App Engine. So we are going to talk today about uh, web APIs. Uh, what are web APIs? Uh, we'll go through that a little bit. We look at, uh, be, I mean, a lot of samples that uh, Google can provide. I mean, Google is a big provider for, uh, for APIs. And we'll see how you can create your own APIs if you want to uh, expose your business logic to, uh, to the world of things. So, very simple uh, definition, you know, it's a new generation of website or web server that uh, is meant to be accessible by any kind of uh, machine. And machine can be, you know, iOS, Android, uh, Internet Explorer 6 or 7 or, or Chrome. So, you want to build an app that will be accessible with that. So, yes, you can do a website, but it's, I mean, a HTML-based uh, website, but it's not enough. You, you need uh, other uh, type of clients, like rich client for uh, iPhone or, or Android or BlackBerry. Uh, you also want your application to scale, because uh, if your uh, customers are using Android, uh, it's highly possible that uh, your website will be accessed many, many times, not 50 times a day, but uh, potentially uh, hundreds of millions a day. Okay? It's possible. So you, you don't want to, to host this in, in your garage, basically. So you, 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 know, you start with, uh, okay, let's, let's do a design, you know, oh, I will have a backend with uh, some database where I can stare, I mean, share my state. Uh, I will have my clients, I know them, because this is where uh, my, uh, my customers are, uh, are uh, active. And I will need to uh, write some application logic and expose it one way or the other to my uh, clients. So, you know, I might need a mail server, a search API to search to my uh, shared state, which, you know, I could use MySQL, for example, or a non-SQL database. And then, you know, I can start coding my API, but I don't maybe want to have uh, the entire set of uh, uh, competitor using my, my APIs, you know, they, they don't, I mean, I don't want to expose my APIs to a, uh, an Android app that uh, is not author authorized to, to use it. Uh, I might deal with uh, compression, Y format, so a lot of things. Uh, it's a bit more complicated than uh, what I expected. Then, you know, maybe uh, you want to build uh, your API, uh, API usage. You know, I mean, it's a third-party customer of, of yours, so you, you provide a value-added service and you want to, uh, to make sure that uh, you take benefit of it. Security is a big deal. Uh, versioning, you know, if you deploy your, uh, your uh, web service in, uh, today, you know, version 1.0, what will happen in two years or in five years? If you still have old Android, uh, KitKat Android in five years, they might access your, uh, your web API in version one. Uh, you might need to document it for uh, client uh, developers. You want maybe to make it discoverable. Uh, you, want, you would love to have a code generation, you know, sample code, uh, DDoS uh, layer so that nobody can uh, break you. Uh, you know, GitHub is often uh, down because of uh, DDoS attacks. So, you know, sometimes when I do labs, an hour before my lab, uh, GitHub is down, so it's tricky. Uh, you want logging, traffic control, all this, okay? So it's a little bit more complicated than, you know, doing a, a, a simple web app and, uh, and exposing endpoints. So, and then you have, you know, uh, hey, uh, iPhone, I need to, uh, to write Objective-C. I, I know nothing about Objective-C, so I don't know what to do with that. Uh, Android, it's an Android wrapper, uh, and, and now uh, Dart or a JavaScript uh, client. So it's complicated. 
And then, if you run this in your garage, you know, you will have to patch the kernel of your, your Linux, you will have to maintain the middleware, change the hard disk, uh, uh, maybe have a power, power supply when there is power uh, outage, etc., etc. Then you will still need to improve your, your application, so you are now balanced between two, two big activities, you know, doing your and what you are good at, developing software or uh, managing your stack. And you will have to find VCs to fund you to, for developing the version number two. So this is exactly what Google has been doing for, I mean, since, since day one, okay? So uh, and at the Google scale, I mean, having one, one uh, web, web API, a web server uh, offering APIs should be easy, but we have tens, hundreds of them, okay? So what we did is basically a framework for Google to handle uh, API services uh, for Google. So let's look at it. Uh, I don't know if you know James Dean, uh, Jeff Dean, but it's a, it's a Googler, uh, very famous because he's very highly ranked at Google and uh, you can find things on the web for him, very, 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 very funny. So uh, we, at Google, we offer a lot, a lot of uh, web APIs. So let's, uh, let's click, you know, this is a, a link, so, link, so let's see what, uh, what, uh, what, 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 what we can see here. Okay, so I am using an API explorer uh, for Google, from Google, and you know, uh, you can have uh, add uh, exchange buyer, you can have, uh, let's see, BigQuery APIs, Book API, Calendar API, you know, so, and we can scroll down. Okay, so you see, we, we, we offer you a lot of APIs that you can use in your Android or iPhone apps. So let's look at one, for example. Uh, calendar, so where is Calendar? Okay, it's a big, big screen. Uh, okay, Calendar API. So there is some, uh, some documentation, or a version, okay, version three, so I click on it. And then I see a few things. Oh, okay, uh, maybe, uh, maybe I can uh, get the list of my calendars. Okay, interesting. Uh, so let's, let's try this one, uh, the list. Okay, oh, nice, okay, I want to, I want to, I want, I want to try it. Okay, so I click on execute. Oops, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not authorized to, to, to use this API. So uh, let's switch to uh, OAuth 2. I will say, okay, Google, I trust you. I, uh, I want you to, to be able to access to my calendar. Okay, so uh, as a user, you have to say that. So now I click again on uh, execute, and hopefully, yeah, here you see my, the list of my calendars. Okay, so it's it's a different format than, uh, than the calendar web app from Google, but you can, uh, you can have a, a JSON uh, uh, payload that will return the list of calendar plus a few things, you know, uh, a few information on it. Okay, so this is cool because, you know, in no time I was able, first of all, to discover, hey, Google has APIs, and then select one, and then even execute, uh, uh, execute it to see uh, what I can do with uh, this information. So this is interesting. So let's go back. And here I would say, hey, you know, all versions. So now I have even more services. So let's look at calendar. Well, calendar, we removed V2, but uh, if you look, for example, at the uh, exchange buyer, you have V1, V1.1, 1.2, 1.3. So, you know, this uh, team is still very active developing their uh, services, but you could still call the v1.2 API. So this is cool, no? Uh, let me pick one, okay. So this is interesting because uh, as, as a developer, I'm sure you will need at one point of time to access some uh, Google information somewhere from your customers, from uh, whether it's a calendar or ads or uh, maps, etc., etc. And you start, seeing a pattern that we are using all over the place to that Google. Okay, so this is interesting. So now you are a Java developer, I guess. I mean, who is a Java developer here? Almost everybody, okay? So yeah, I mean, JSON is nice, uh, Dart is perfect, and JavaScript is, you know, uh, uh, a little bit more complicated, but I would love to have uh, Java APIs. 
guess what? You know, here we, we look at the page for uh, the client library Java APIs. So these are exactly the same APIs we have seen in the previous uh, UI, but now this is talking to me, okay? Now I'm a Java developer. Hey, I want to use the Java calendar, V3. Cool, okay, so I have uh, Javadoc, I have a quick start, uh, that's cool. You know, I have a sample, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is, uh, this is interesting. I can click on it. I can even have some documentation. You know, I need to get a Google account, I have that, et cetera, et cetera. So this is really cool. Okay, so let's see. Oh, uh, in order to use it uh, in my application, well, I need to set up a project and application in the Cloud Console. So let's click on it. Oh, so this is now the new Cloud Console. So I have a new, uh, uh, let's pick an application that I have created with this Cloud Console. So it's an application that is known by, by Google, okay? So you can use App Engine uh, capabilities, you, you can use, well, let, let, let me make it bigger a little bit. Uh, you can use App Engine uh, projects, you can use uh, Compute Engine projects, Cloud Storage, uh, Cloud Data Store, Cloud SQL, BigQuery, etc. And hey, you can use also uh, API. So let's look at the API tab here. Hey, yeah, that's cool, you know. I see again the same list, but most of those APIs are uh, off. So I'm not allowed to use them yet. But, uh, you know, this morning I was able to uh, turn the calendar API on. So now, you know, from my application that I deploy on a VM running in Compute Engine or in my uh, Google App, uh, App Engine application, I could nicely... Uh, Call, call those, um, those APIs. So this is cool. Uh, if I click on Coda, so uh, you would see that, hey, you know, those APIs, they come, with, uh, they come with a price, okay? So calendar API, I can do five requests per second per user. Um, as a courtesy, uh, Google is giving me uh, 100,000 requests today. Okay, but after that, if you don't enable billing, uh, Google will stop uh, you accessing those APIs. Okay, so this is interesting because now you have really uh, a full uh, monitoring environment and way of uh, uh, getting money from uh, your, your, your customers. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, you also have a f you can register applications, so it's more uh, if I want I want to register an Android application or an iPhone ap uh, application, you you can uh, register it here, and you will uh, generate token that you put in your application, so that only this application can talk to your API, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so this is interesting. So let's uh, now. Uh, go back to the presentation. So we were able to, you know, navigate through a bunch of uh, API that uh, Google is providing, and that would, it would be cool if you could do the same for your, your own APIs, correct? You know, use the same uh, fully tested, fully used uh, set of frameworks just for you because you, you want to deploy your application. Okay, so basically, if you want to do that, you will have to use... Uh, Currently, one product called App Engine. So this is uh, the top uh, left uh, corner, uh, where we provide you with uh, Cloud SQL, uh, which is MySQL in the cloud, or uh, Cloud Data Store with a non-SQL da uh, database, uh, which is uh, uh, where you can store at Google scale all your data, whether it's petabytes or terabytes, we, we don't really care. Uh, we provide you with uh, some appli application logic runtime, so whether it's Go, PHP, uh, Java, or Python. API and services. And Google Endpoint is, uh, Cloud Endpoint is just one, uh, one extra technology that uh, 
in fact, was uh, announced 1.0 again, so GA uh, last week or, uh, I mean, a few days ago. So uh, it was in uh, early access mode for, for uh, uh, quite a while. I mean, it, I think it was announced at Google I.O. a year ago. So finally, uh, this week or last week, it was uh, moved, it moved to uh, uh, 1.0, so you can use uh, th those technologies. So what, you, what we have seen for uh, the Google APIs before, everything can be reused by you in your uh, App Engine application. So you will have uh, OAuth 2 baked in uh, easily, even though it's complicated to set up, but it's easier than uh, uh, off the shell, you know, for example, Java E server where uh, configuring OAuth access is, uh, can, be, can be challenging. Uh, we'll give you uh, generators so that we ca you can fully generate Objective-C code, uh, Java client code uh, with two types of builds, whether it's Maven or now Gradle. Uh, you can generate a Gradle project that you put in Android Studio. And uh, you can uh, generate some, uh, uh, well, you can use some uh, JavaScript as well. So um, how is it? Possible, okay? So basically we are offering you the same te technology that uh, Google is using. And the first entry point for this technology is uh, the, a discovery document. So it's basically, uh, it's, a meta, it's a meta model. You know, it's like you would introspect your web services. It's a meta model of, uh, of, your, uh, of your services. So uh, here, for example, I'm exploring uh, well, let's, uh, let's see if I can explore uh, another one, this one. So this is an application that I've been developed, okay? It's called uh, J Candy Store. This is interesting. So let's go to a new page and let's look at this app, okay? So it's basically, it's not pet store, it's candy store <laughs> where you can buy candies on the web. So it's a fully... Uh, uh, I mean, it's not fully Java E compliant, but it's a f equivalent to Pet Store written in, in Java using uh, Cloud SQL, so we're not using Data Store as a sample here. And a year ago, we did a version with JaxRS, and you know, it was working. We could, you could access to uh, all those uh, candies that you can buy online uh, using, using JaxRS. So what I did uh, in the last you know, few days is uh, trying to make it endpoint ready. Okay, so this is the application that we are uh, now looking at in terms of the console. Okay, so this is uh, this guy. Well, no, sorry, that would be not this one, sorry. I have too many of them. This guy. Well, okay. I don't know where it is, so let's go back to... Uh, Let's go back to this guy. Uh, where is it? Sorry, a uh, bit lost. Candy here. Either it's here. I have too many links. Okay, this is it. Okay, this is the. This is the API explorer for the endpoints that I've added to my uh, web application. So one of them, the first one is a discovery document, the discovery service. That would list all the services that my, my application, uh, my application uh, exposed. So you see the, the name of the, the, the service and uh, the ID and uh, then the methods later on. So this is the first, uh, the first service you would ask, uh, you, you would try to, to, to interact with, which is uh, what, what am I capable to, of calling from, uh, from my client? Then the second, I mean, uh, then we have a set of uh, uh, endpoints. So for example, there is a J, J Candy uh, store product, so version one, and I put some comments in my application. We'll see that later. And it's a cloud endpoint for candy store product, and it's live demo at DevOx. Okay, cool. So I can click on it. And here I see uh, some uh, method that I've added to my endpoint. Okay, so get the product, insert the product, list product. So let's click on list. I have a few optional uh, parameters. Uh, can ignore them. 
Um, you know, the database is terrible, but uh, you get the, the ID, you have a list of, uh, the, a, a list of products from, from the database that is used for, uh, for this application. Okay, so this is, uh, this is interesting because basically my own uh, business logic, my own application, I can reuse the same uh, set of uh, uh, layer that Google is using for uh, serving APIs every day. Okay, so uh, seems to be a nice, uh, a nice, uh, a nice story. So now uh, we'll uh, see. Uh, okay, let's go back here. So we have seen this uh, document. Okay, it was just in case the uh, internet didn't work on the uh, Wi-Fi here, but it's working. So we'll, uh, we'll switch now to not the demo, but uh, how we did this application. So here I have, uh, you know, I have three, three IDs. I have Eclipse, I have NetBeans, and I have Android Studio, but I will have to pick one. Uh, I love NetBeans, but uh, I will pick Eclipse. Why? Because too many of you are using Eclipse. <laughs> And uh, so here uh, I have uh, the candy store uh, application. So it's a Maven project that uh, I will push my, all my updates on, on GitHub, but it's, uh, it's on GitHub somewhere. Uh, you can find it. So uh, if you know pet store, you know candy store because you have uh, GPA entities. So you have a product entity, which is uh, you know, uh, persistence plus uh, some XML binding for JAXRS stuff. So this is a GPA uh, entity. Uh, and if you look at uh, the persistent.xml somewhere, uh, it's talking to, uh, uh, or maybe the POM, it's talking to, uh, it's talking to uh, JDBC, Google, RDMS, Scott Tiger, you know classic uh, MySQL database uh, hosted in uh, Cloud SQL. Okay, so I didn't want to pick a Cloud Data Store for it. Uh, just to show that we can also do MySQL uh, in App Engine. So I have my GPA, so now I want to, to create an endpoint. So uh, I created a new package called uh, Endpoints here, and I put a bunch of them, but let's look at one of them called Product Endpoint. Okay, so here basically, I'm doing some business logic, so list product, you know, you get an entity manager, you do a, a SQL query, and then you get the list of products, okay? So this is, your, this is your business logic, okay? It could be anything. It could be accessing MongoDB, uh, Couch uh, Database, whatever. Uh, here it's uh, MySQL. And uh, more or less equivalent to, uh, to JAXRS, but it's not JAXRS, you are using annotation. So you annotate your business uh, method with the name of the endpoint. Okay, so far so good. And the entire uh, endpoint class, so product endpoint, is using exactly this um, at API annotation. So you put the name, uh, some namespace, the title, so title will be used in the Explorer uh, UI we have seen before. Some description, you remember the, when I was using the uh, Explorer, uh, this is uh, where it's, it is. Uh, I did not put uh, any, uh, this character at the end, if you noticed, but uh, we can redeploy it if you want. So let's uh, redeploy it live. Might not work, but uh, let's see if it works. Okay, in fact, uh, let's do it. Okay, I'm saving, and from the ID I will uh, I will just update this, uh, this application, okay? So here it's doing his Maven stuff and uh, we have a Maven plugin that will generate everything that needs to be generated for endpoints. So let's look at the pom.xml while it's doing it. Uh, here. We are doing a few, uh, well, Eclipse is not happy with it, but it's a perfectly valid uh, pom.xml. Uh, I am doing a few things. I'm generating some uh, discovery documentation. And I'm also, while I'm on it, uh, generating client libraries. 
Okay, those two lines that you, uh, you add to uh, the App Engine Maven plugin will do what, whatever is necessary to, uh, to, uh, to create the correct uh, client code that we can use later. Okay, so uh, very simple stuff. So you can use it in command line, you can use it in anywhere, including Android Studio. Okay, so here I think we are done. So we are fully redeployed. So let's see if the, uh, the change now in the Explorer is better. Uh, so what was it? Uh, let's see here. Yes. Uh, bang, bang, and reload. Not yet. Takes time. Sometimes, you know, this is the magic of Google. You, don't, you never know where things are. Uh, being replicated, etc. So we'll go back to this screen uh, a little bit later. Okay, so moving back to, uh, to Eclipse. So uh, in while I was uh, building my projects, so let's, lo let, let's look at the uh, Maven build output. Okay, I did a few things. And uh, he generated some endpoint discovery document for those four endpoints that I have in my project. And then uh, he generated uh, the endpoint uh, client library. Okay, and uh, I think it will tell you where it is generated. So we generate those guys in the target directory uh, generated source app engine endpoint. So let's look at it. Uh, from, uh, well, I think it's already there. So uh, this second project, module-product uh, endpoints, is basically a Maven project that has been generated by, by this uh, endpoint client generation uh, command. So I can open it and I can uh, fully do a, a build install so that this uh, jar file will be available in my Maven environment so that I can do, uh, for example, Android, uh, Android uh, uh, client usage, I mean, usage of this library. So let's look at the generated code on the client side, the, which is the Android client or a Java client. Uh, it generates me again a model, but this is a client side uh, class to access my uh, product uh, my product uh, entity from, from, from an Android phone, okay? So this is a build date. Um, uh, well, maybe I need to do a refresh. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a really, it's a Pojo uh, cloud that, you, that can, you can use on your, in your, uh, in your uh, Android client. So let's see, here I have a Java main, uh, Java main class, which is using, uh, where is it? No. Uh, okay, so I don't see it here, so let's open it in a different, in a different ID, that's why I have two. Uh, this guy here, I hope the source is still there. Yes. Okay. So the, 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 this is, uh, this is, a client-side way of accessing your, your API. So basically, you get the client endpoint, you execute it, and then the API that you use on the server side is list of products. Okay, so we can run it from there. Uh, run in file. Let's go up. Uh, yeah, so it's not very readable, uh, vi uh, readable, but here you have seen uh, your client endpoint. So here there is n really nothing magic, okay? I mean, you have done that, I'm pretty sure, if you have done some RESTful web services, but the value that we are adding is uh, all the ecosystem and the, uh, the coda management and security management that uh, we use for APIs uh, inside, uh, inside Google for your application. So let's look at uh, yet another client. Uh, in fact, another client is 
something that I have added here uh, inside this application itself. So it's, uh, it's a JavaScript, JavaScript access to, uh, to those endpoints. So here, this is the code uh, which is executing. Uh, control plus. Okay. So this is the endpoint URL, and uh, it's a simple, uh, simple uh, AJAX call to uh, to get this uh, this uh, resource and display it. Okay. So we display it on this side. Okay. So. Basically, you have seen many, many ways of using uh, your uh, web, web API from different, uh, different, uh, different uh, clients. So let's go back to, uh, so let's go back to uh, the presentation mode. So if you look at the anatomy of this URL, you will see I mean, service route, which is uh, uh, some, you know, some, uh, some URL pattern that you, you map in your web.xml, uh, the API name, so here it was product endpoint, then the version, uh, I, I think you have noticed uh, by default it was v1, uh, entity, so here it was product, and then uh, op optional parameters. So uh, the value of this is, yeah, you are, you are a Java developer, so you know, you know more or less uh, how to do that. But uh, Cloud Endpoints is not only limited to, uh, to Java, okay? So we have uh, Cloud Endpoints working also for uh, Python runtime in, in App Engine. So the same uh, business logic could be completely implemented, not in uh, using annotation in Java, but more decorator in, in Python. And internally at Google, we have binding for, I mean, many, many other uh, uh, runtimes we are using internally uh, that we will uh, expose uh, as we go. Uh, so this is uh, how you do uh, uh, client library generation from uh, the App Engine SDK location. Uh, there is an endpoint or search or uh, uh, bat file that uh, you can use to, to generate uh, uh, those two uh, critical artifacts on the client side, uh, or uh, we, have, uh, we have done some uh, Maven, uh, Maven and uh, Gradle uh, integration as well there. Okay. So two things uh, create the, the document discovery that will be used to, 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 to generate the client library. So, uh, this is on the Java client side or Android, uh, Android application. So basically the product endpoint, product, list product, collection response product are fully generated as a Maven or Gradle project that you can uh, reuse, for example, very easily in uh, Android Studio so that you can call, uh, you can call those APIs very easily. Uh, it's a very simple way of uh, consuming those uh, resources. So now, uh, we did not talk about uh, authentication. Okay, you, you want you now you would like to add some uh, some hook saying you know if uh, if I'm not called from uh, somebody I know I don't want to I don't want to um, I want I don't want to serve this uh, this request. So here uh, in uh, the API annotation in Java, but you can do that in Python as well. You just need to add a few entries in the in the attribute of the annotation where you list the list, I mean, the, you list some uh, client IDs, uh, whether it's uh, for web access, Android access, IO access, I mean, you can, you can have N, N of them, okay? But you, you want to cover at least uh, web, Android, and iOS, but you could have uh, even more specific client IDs. So those client IDs are basically URLs here that are generated using the API Explorer and uh, the uh, Cloud Console to, uh, to, add, uh, to add tokens so that uh, from your uh, cloud, uh, cloud project uh, hosted by Google, Google can generate a unique ID that uh, you will use on your, uh, on, your, uh, on your client side. Then to use uh, OAuth uh, for, every, for every API that you are using, for example, list products, here we did not put any parameters, 
but you could put a parameter of type uh, uh, that um, uh, user API. So you could use the App Engine APIs for users management. So it's just user. So you say user, my user. And uh, in the implementation of get products, you will say if the user is null, then nobody is authenticated. Okay? And then you will pop up the nice screen, I mean the Google screen to, to log in uh, as, as a as a Google ID before you can uh, interact with the service. So it's, uh, it's fairly easy to, uh, to add, uh, to add uh, authentication and OAuth access to, uh, to, your, to, to your endpoints. So I'll, I'll need to, uh, to finish with uh, this. So you, know, you are more on the Android side of the business, so you know how to write Android application, you know how to uh, to, uh, to have them store preferences locally on the phone. And you don't exactly know what you want to do, but you, you, you would love to be able to uh, connect your uh, application running locally on your phone to, to the cloud. Uh, but you don't, you don't really want to, uh, you know, to use uh, MySQL because you don't know what it is, or even uh, Cloud data, data Store because you don't know what it is. You don't want to, uh, to start entering annotation because uh, in Android uh, you don't know about those. So we have a solution because uh, what, uh, what we have just uh, I mean, updated this week is uh, something called uh, mobile backend, uh, mobile backend uh, uh, starter. And if you go to the URL at the end, MBS, uh, mobile uh, backend starter, it's basically a generic uh, App Engine application that we host on the, in the cloud that can do very, very interesting things for your Android client. So you can write in Android on the uh, Android application, for example, you can create entities that will be stored in the cloud data store uh, on, on the back end. So now in, instead of storing the user prefer preferences on the local, uh, local uh, storage of your phone, I mean, for your application, you could start moving things in, in the cloud so that your customer, if it changes phone or whatever, will get the, pre the preferences from, from the cloud. And here you have almost, I mean, you have nothing to, nothing to write because uh, the application is uh, pre-built for you. You just need to deploy it to one of your uh, cloud projects that you create with the cloud console. And... Uh, you will use uh, in, in no time, in, fa in fact, less than 30 minutes, you will access to a, a cloud data store capabilities that directly uh, program from your a Android client. So we have also integrated this sample with uh, Apple push notifications. So uh, you could also use this, uh, this backend uh, for uh, your uh, uh, iOS uh, customers as well as uh, cloud, uh, cloud uh, messaging. So it's pretty cool. I mean, you, 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 if you are in the, in the mobile development side, I highly recommend it to, to, to use it because uh, you can literally control uh, what is stored in the cloud and how you manage your users, uh, how they are authenticated with uh, Google accounts uh, uh, very easily inside your... Um, your uh, your Android app. And obviously everything is running on App Engine. So it's, it's a Java app, uh, but you don't really need, to, uh, you don't really need to, to see it because uh, you don't really care. Uh, so uh, to, to finish, uh, there is one, uh, one last slide that I would like to talk about is if you want to try it and you, you are scared because you don't want to pay or you don't want to, uh, to uh, yeah, uh, you are not convinced about uh, what, what we can offer, uh, you, can, you can get either in your, in your bag or here we have a few of them, uh, you can get a credit of $2,000 to use anything you want in the cloud platform. So whether it's App Engine, Compute Engine, BigQuery, Cloud, uh, cloud SQL, uh, cloud data store, I mean, all those services, or even accessing, uh, you know, calendar APIs. You know, you, suddenly you, you, you need to, to write an Android client accessing uh, calendar entries for many of your customers. Well, uh, you will have to do a lot of calls uh, before you can reach those $2,000, uh, okay? 
So the idea here is uh, you investigate uh, what we offer in the cloud, and, uh, and you, can, you can really go a, a long way uh, with 2,000 bucks. So uh, this is basically it. So I was uh, faster than 20, yeah, uh, 30 minutes at least for uh, the demo. We did not create the app entirely, so it was basically taking advantage of a pre-written pre, uh, application and adding uh, web, web APIs access to, to this uh, pre-cooked um, uh, application. So now uh, I, can, uh, I can answer questions if, if you have questions. Hard to see. One, yes? So, so yeah. So the the, the question is, uh, those endpoints will uh, will count uh, in your quota of uh, usage of your uh, application? Yes. I mean, you have seen that they, they are accessed via REST uh, REST API. So uh, here, uh, the quota for uh, bandwidth will uh, will 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 happen for from App Engine, as well as if you access a cloud data store or cloud storage, I mean cloud uh, and, uh, MySQL, uh, here as well you will be charged depending on the size of the data you are, you are accessing. But there is no extra charge because you are using the endpoint technology. One more over there. What? Oh, so 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 for so for the mobile uh, startup project, uh, the generated code uh, you you can access it. Okay, it's uh, fully open source. You can view it. You can even modify it if you want. But out of the box, it's working. Okay, so it's it's a it's a Java uh, it's a Java server application. So you can, in fact, I would encourage you to look at it because. You have good patterns on how to use a uh, cloud data store, how to use uh, your, the user APIs to, uh, to add security to your uh, server. So uh, you, you can use it either as is or uh, customize it if you want. Add more services if you want, etc., etc. Okay, no more questions, so thank you.